going to have uh, Shoichi Kawamoto, and uh, he is from Taiwan, the National Center for Theoretical Sciences. Okay, so thank you very much for introduction, and uh, I thank uh, all of you for just staying in this room. This is this great. Okay, today I'm going to talk about some renormalization group approach to the matrix models. So this kind of study is motivated by the uh, following uh, problem. So let us consider the sum a Euclidean two-dimensional quantum gravity. So the partition function may be given by the sum summing over the, the discrete highest random surfaces and with suitable quantity limit. And as it's well known, so this a uh, problem can be mapped to the, the calculation of the sum Feynman diagram. So the in this case, five five positive theory, and uh, the summing up uh, over uh, summing up this Feynman diagram can be considered by this zero-dimensional quantum field theory. And uh, if uh, this uh, field is just matrix, then the, the topology of the surface is uh, also uh, captured by this Feynman diagrams. So in this case, a, in this simple problem, a, one can calculate actually that the partial function exactly. And it's known that uh, for the, the planar part, the, the partial function develops uh, some singularity as uh, some uh, special uh, point of the coupling constant. Uh, at this point, the expectation number of the, the uh, number of the, these squares, in this case, is divergent. So by approaching to this critical point, together with uh, the uh, size of this equation to be zero, the, you can uh, realize some continuum limit when some smooth surfaces are summed over. And so in this uh, normalization, this exact value of the critical, critical coupling is known to be minus one over 12. So it's a whole story. So what if, but uh, we don't know the how to calculate the partition function exactly, then uh, there's an interesting uh, proposed uh, is, uh, this kind of the procedure. So this is a partition function, then the first consider that they compose this original matrix into this form. This small phi is a n minus one by n minus one, a bit smaller matrix, and some vectors and the scalars. And integrate over this uh, vector scalars. Then you can obtain uh, some new action for the a bit smaller size of the matrix. So this integration may be performed in the graphical in this way. So uh, this two part gives you the correction to the quadratic part, and this is the correction to the quadratic part. Since uh, this correction, the the the, 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 the mass term of the, the coupling constant that is shifted, this shift can be summarized into the, this uh, RG type equation the large limit. Then you can uh, define the, some beta function, and then you can look for the, some uh, fixed points of the beta function. Uh, in this uh, model, uh, this uh, the fixed point is given by this way. It's minus 0 0.1 by 1 numerically. So it's exact about it's minus uh, 0 0.03. So it's qualitatively not that bad. So they propose uh, this method to consider the critical behavior of the matrix model uh, in which that the exact computation is uh, too difficult. But today, I may consider uh, this kind of thing. So we have decomposed matrix into this form, but uh, why we chose this form? So actually, that's, uh, each element of the matrix, are a, there's no specific a meaning of this decomposition, each element of the matrix are actually equal is uh, important. So in the usual Wilsonian RG, we can integrate over the highest energy mode or shortest distance mode, but uh, uh, there is no such a meaning in this case. Then uh, we want to, uh, I want to consider today uh, this kind of uh, thing. So first I consider the, some field theory on the sphere. And the, the fields can be the, uh, expanded in terms of the spherical harmonics. And from this theory, uh, we can move to the, some uh, uh, theories on party sphere, uh, where the, this uh, coordinate x is replaced with uh, some singular representation of SU2. SU2. Then uh, this uh, continuum field is replaced with some matrices, and this basis uh, spherical harmonics is replaced with some uh, uh, matrix. Uh, Statistical harmonics, and in this case, uh, this uh, <coughs> angular momentum L uh, previously equals to infinity is now cut it as some very large value to L. In this way, 
cases, uh, we can obtain the some matrix action, and uh, this is the basis. Uh, this is the Williams uh, CDK symbol, and uh, uh, this is practically how uh, uh, what is the non-vanishing element of this basis. So in this basis, uh, the difference s, uh, s minus s prime is bounded by the angular momentum L. So which means that the uh, diagonal part, uh, any any uh, size of L can be allowed to obtain or have the non-vanishing value. But uh, this corner, uh, only large L uh, basis has non-vanishing values. But anyway, uh, by introducing this basis, uh, we can put the some meaning of the the uh, high energy or low energy to the matrix elements, namely that uh, the coefficient of the, the uh, basis with the large L part may be uh, it's interpreted as some uh, high energy mode. So with this introduction, uh, with this uh, basis, uh, I can do uh, again the, the uh, matrix model normalization calculation uh, and see what it happens. So why do you allow major pairs? Any? I assume L is greater than zero. Uh, uh, okay, th this is this is a S a magnetic uh, eigenvalue oh, that's oh, minus oh, okay. S. Okay, and uh, one of the motivation to think about uh, this kind of study that, uh, for example, that's similar to the human stall, uh, there are various types of the supersymmetric matrix model, and uh, a, it may provide another approach to uh, analyze this kind. Matrix model because uh, uh, many of them uh, admit uh, some uh, non-commutative uh, background solutions. For example, in some solutions, uh, it, they give uh, some non-commutative Yamio theory on party squares and so forth. So uh, this kind of study would prove a uh, start, uh, some uh, starting point on um, uh, considering uh, this kind of uh, analyzing matrix model. So far, this is the introduction. Uh, so I first uh, give you the some. Uh, with the calculation, and then I a bit talk about uh, some uh, twisted field appearing in this calculation, and how the uh, renormalization group equation with this twisted field, and I will talk about this. So calculation is actually simple. So I am going to integrating out the, some uh, largest angular momentum model 2L, and then writing down the effective action for the rest of them. So the, the, for the, this highest mode, the, we, I may define the propagator, which is diagonal mode, and the, the interaction vertices uh, can be classified into the, how many this out mode includes. So, red one uh, is the, uh, the field to be integrated out, so then uh, diagrammatically, the calculation is just uh, like this. So, this is uh, some correction to the uh, cortex, uh, vertex, like this. So, this is quite parallel the usual uh, field theory calculation you will know. But there appear some a matrix model feature uh, up here. First is that, uh, okay, after this kind of uh, calculation, this matrix phi itself is now n minus one by n minus one matrix, see? But uh, the, this trace part is still taken in the n minus space. So this trace is the, the came from the integration over S2, so but, uh, in this matrix model case, uh, we need to map this place into the n minus one minus n minus one space. So this is the uh, uh, matrix model like features. <coughs> so this can, this kind of mapping is uh, by using the, uh, the explicit form that three J symbol and the six J symbol and the some uh, recursion relations in six J symbol, uh, we can derive the, the, this kind of relation. Another thing is that. Uh, uh, from this diagram, we did obtain the some uh, double trace uh, corrections. That's again, uh, by using the some asymptotic formula for the six day symbol, uh, it allowed us to reorganize this double trace operators into the single trace operator with some derivative correction. Okay, the derivative means that uh, a, a, a Laplacian on the S2. And the, the final thing that uh, it's uh, related to some non commutative nature. So if you calculate this kind of diagram, then uh, you can organize the field uh, collection this way. But this 
pi to the a is the sum uh, twisted field where the, this minus one to the angular momentum the tail is added. And uh, I call it uh, unfolded field. The reason that uh, uh, this minus one to the L in the if you multiply it to the usual uh, spherical harmonics, then it actually points to the antipodal point in S2. So, which means that uh, this collection induces some non local uh, term and it's actually uh, maximally non local in S2. So, this is uh, here the some comment. So, uh, okay, so appearance of this uh, the oscillating phase is known uh, for some time. And for example, uh, Johnson here and some collaborators pointed out that uh, this is related to the uh, you will IR mixing effect in the uh, non convergent plane. So instead of, the, uh, in this case, I just take only the largest mode, but uh, if you take summing over all the modes, uh, then uh, this uh, this diagram gives you the, some a bit milder uh, effect. And uh, if you go to the, the some uh, non commutative plane from the uh, party sphere, then uh, this term actually produces the well known the UV IR mixing term. So, this a uh, uh, twisted field is also got a non commutative nature in this case, so it's interesting to uh, think about uh, the renormalization group uh, analysis for this one. And uh, then we can actually write down the, the renormalization group equation. So uh, uh, before then, uh, so in the as in the usual uh, quantum field theory, uh, after the integrating out some range of the momentum is shifted, so we may put some scaling factor to about the original size of the momentum. Then uh, you can write down the renormalization group equation like this. In this case, I first, for the moment, I simply drop in that uh, antipodal uh, twisted field and the thinking of energy. This is uh, actually the best possible uh, answers to write down this and the coefficient. Once you write down uh, this uh, equation from a, a capital M theory to the N minus M theory, uh, you can look for the uh, brief uh, fixed point of this uh, uh, equations. So you can actually find a uh, fixed point. For example, of course, uh, you can find Gaussian and uh, you can perform the linear analysis analysis as usual. And also uh, introducing the some analog of the wave function renormalization, uh, you can formally obtain the non-trivial, non-Gaussian fixed point like this. <coughs> so uh, in the usual large end limit where the low end is fixed, then this M and G star is actually going to infinity. But uh, in this a uh, matrix node formalism, uh, we are allowed to take a various kind of the, the, the large end limit, for example, uh, as a then goes to infinity and uh, some fundamental scale alpha is fixed, so in this case, low n squared scales by n squared, or uh, some uh, limit that is mapped to the non commutative field theory. In that case, uh, this uh, low square t uh, scales by square root of n, uh, low square scales by n. So in this case, uh, for example, you can formally obtain some uh, non trivial fixed point. It's not really small coupling constant, so that the uh, uh, perturbation theory is not fully really trustable, but anyway, we can uh, find uh, this kind of the uh, non trivial fixed point. What is small a? Yeah, what is small a? Alpha. Alpha? Yeah. This a, okay, a, sorry. Uh, well, okay. As in the usual quantum field theory, we need to uh, give uh, some renormalization factor to the field. And uh, this is uh, the extra n dependence that turned into, in this case, uh, the coupling constant. It's arbitrary. A, the value of A is? Value of the A is a tune to uh, find uh, a fixed point. It's, uh, the, well, it's analogous to the usual Fitzgerald function. So, so, sorry, in the non commuted plane, why was that an N in your formula? Have you, have you taken n to infinity to get that? Uh, yes, yes, a. 
So in this case, that uh, one was generated to be fixed to be the maximum value, then two of the two less of the generated to be just x and y, and uh, this gives you the scale theta. Wait, so, so, so does that need taking n to infinity? Uh, yes, there's a. Uh, Yes, yes. So then why is there an n in your formula? Ah, okay. Well, the, this is actually infinity, yes. So, so, so this mass part is actually goes to infinity. Uh, and what does that mean? That's some renormalization? Why, why, what, what does it mean then? Well, I, this means that, uh, well, okay, actually that uh, x point appears as a, a negative infinity. So, we, well, we can really, well, this is just simply that uh, m star is going to negative infinity when you go to the most infinity. Yeah. <coughs> now, okay, so in the previous case, I just dropped that uh, the twisted order field. That's, uh, so finally, I want to look at uh, by, uh, how the story changes when we include this one. So if we include the the a, some a, a effect of this a unfold field, then we may start with uh, some action which that includes the unfold field in the beginning, and uh, we uh, put some more couplings. So we haven't uh, reached the, the final answer yet, but uh, I may report uh, some of the calculations. So uh, once uh, introducing this. Uh, uh, First action, then the, the this is straightforward. For example, you can calculate the, the other equation from the n theory to the n minus one variables like this. And here, the, uh, there are many coefficients: uh, c, c n, or uh, c n or something. Uh, this or this this one, and this uh, has some positive prime factor impact. So because of the this the oscillating factor. Uh, we may first touch that uh, the uh, what is uh, the fixed point for the then even case and then uh, sorry this is wrong but uh, an even case and then odd case. So actually, uh, there are uh, uh, many many fixed points are found. So for an even case, then this one, then odd case, and that one. But uh, the unfortunately, the, they are not really the the intersect to each other, which means that uh, there is no common fixed point for n and that means that uh, a, a neither of them is actually a stable fixed point when you go to n to infinity. So this leads us to consider this n to the n minus two group, which means that uh, in this case uh, you may stay an even case or either an odd case and you go to, n go to infinity. So you can write down the equation in this one and uh, the other as well. So, so far, uh, a, some, a approximate fixed point uh, can be found uh, with some uh, unders, but uh, a, it's still a, a, a numerical approximated result, so it's not a good uh, starting point for the, the more detailed study, so we need to further consideration. And the other thing that uh, uh, this n to the n minus two row is given by uh, just repeating the, the previous uh, one step row, but uh, in that case, uh, the low energy approximation is not really good, so we actually need to uh, uh, <coughs> take into account uh, some errors when we first consider the low energy approximation, so uh, this is actually uh, we are working. But anyway, the related question that's uh, Okay, in that case, we may uh, take a larger limit with, with only even n or only odd n, something that's uh, that case. So in this larger limit has uh, some uh, physical meaning or something, uh, that's a uh, question because uh, as uh, starting point, uh, just a uh, scalar field theory on polysphere, so n even and n odd uh, doesn't seem to have a specific uh, distinction. So uh, this is conclusion. So we have done uh, some uh, analysis for the analysis for the field.
building parties here, and uh, uh, this is just a picture of the and this is all on this is all here. Thank you. A few last questions for Shorichi before we wrap up for holiday. Okay, now let's thank all the speakers for this section.